just God, it's amazing. Life is just a marathon, so pace it. Rush pain, that things hate me, damn Life ain't gotta be hard, just keep it basic. Welcome back to Fort Meade Disclassified. I'm your host today, Chad Jones. Jasmine is off on holiday vacation, and, and Glorianne is behind the camera today. Uh, but that's only so I can be here with our fearless leader for, what, about 14, 16 months now? I'm trying not to count because it's over the hill. Right, it makes me are. sad that I'm on the downslope. You are well, but you're still doing. You know, you're still doing a pretty good job in, in my in my doing humble a, assessment. I'm still your favorite for nine more months. Nine more months, you will be my favorite. But um, I mean, that's a big part of why we're why we're here today is talk a little bit about the year. I mean, this is going to be our holiday episode, so we're going to air this right okay. around the January time frame. So, thought it would be a good idea to a get a little bit of your assessment of 2023. If you hear a copier or a printer going off, we're because work is office. happening. That's right. That's it. We got a holiday party. I'm in my holiday sweater. If you did not notice, you were in your. I have a holiday sweater at the ready. Really? And I think you'll appreciate it because it's a cardigan, so nice. it's classy, but it's also Gremlins. All right. Oh yeah, Gremlins. Underrated holiday movie. It Gremlins. is. It gets ignored. And scary. I don't know if I'd go that far. It depends on the age I mean, at which you watched it. Pop in a microwave, yeah. Creepy, but they're yeah. kickable. Yeah. Just like Child's Play, Chucky never should have been scary because he was kickable. So, sir, just uh, a little bit. I mean, how how was twenty twenty three for you? Twenty so, for the fort, I guess. Oh, that's a harder question. No, um, right, because right now it's kind of one and the same. Yeah. Twenty twenty three was so many highs and lows. Uh, it, and as my grandmother said, you can't appreciate the mountains if not for the valleys. So you got to go through them so you can realize at the high top how beautiful everything is. But at the same time, I also got to see the community come together in each step of the way. That the, uh, the desire for people to look out for one another and to work together is ultimately why I love this job so much. Because it, it makes everything work. And in the end, I know that regardless of what's going to happen, we're going to come out stronger. Some of the high points specifically, as you may have heard, we got the 2023 Great American Defense Community recognition. So we were one of five that earned that title right. out of the hundreds of DOD installations around the world. And so uh, that was pretty phenomenal. It wasn't just about the base, but it's all the alliances and partnerships that we have off posts and uh, because I know when you first came on, and what I've noticed with most garrison commanders, and just for those of you who don't know, it's like seven now for me, they don't understand what they're getting into because there really is no garrison commander training. But at what point did you come in and like, or feel like, okay, I'm going to make concerted effort to make things improve on things that are already good like you came in the community relationships yeah. were already good but then how what's the process of like okay here's where i'm going to improve and how i want to improve it so i'll say one of the problems with <clears throat> military commanders is we always want to improve and so even if everybody thinks everything's going smoothly by golly by gum we're going to find a way to make improvements whether you like it or not and so Day one, I was ready to make improvements. Now, the, when I knew there were areas that I could improve upon, that's a harder question because of getting to learn what it means to be a garrison commander, especially at Fort Meade, where we have a little more flexibility in the senior commander authorities that we have. And in that case, I thought back. So Mr. Tyndall is our director directly above me from an installation chain in the supervisory. And when he did his in brief with me, he said, every commander gets really, really good at one thing. And then they get pretty good at a lot of things. Yep. And it's because that one thing is where you have the most problems. And so you have to dig in like nothing else. I took that to heart. And I was hoping that it would never have to come to that because everything would run smoothly. But there's always something. Yep. So uh, CYS was a big one for us. We're working through those. But we've got the right leadership in uh, Miss. 
Bryant is amazing. I've recognized that sometimes the best things we can do is find the right people and then support them in any way. We've had a pretty significant year with the schools. You were just at the Friends of Meat event on Saturday. Yeah. Um, how, how was that overall, you know, that relationship always seems to have, ebb and flow. How, how do you think that is going with the, with the public schools right now and, you know, redistricting coming up and things of that nature? How, how is that working? I think it, I think it <clears throat> continues to improve. Redistricting, I think, is a really good thing. I think it will relieve a lot of the overpopulation and crowding issues that we have in some of the senior high schools as well as the middle schools. And so I think that distribution of personnel will, will be tremendous and in, it, in of itself will create a better learning environment for our students. I think if you're one of the families that moved to an area, so right. you could attend school X and you're told to go to school Y, or if you've been at school X for the last two years and now you're told to go to school Y next year, uh, that has a real impact. And so that's, that's part of the friction that I can understand the enterprise and institution issues. And I think they are valid. Uh, it's just also helping to remember to connect to the individual people. Yeah. Were there any projects that got done that uh, you're like, yes, finally I got this done? Or obviously there's a lot of construction going on around here that are for things that are getting done. So people may not be as excited about what they've seen the roads getting torn up because it definitely creates some traffic issues. But American Water's efforts to fix all the pipe, and I say fix, it's an upgrade, right? We have galvanized steel, and in some areas, there's still clay pipes around this base uh, because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Especially in a budget constrained environment, that uh, becomes part of the decision making. Uh, but now it's time, and as American Water has upgraded, uh, that, that's fantastic. It improves our resiliency as a base, it improves the standard of living for our residents as well as those of, those of us working here. Uh, I say that the garrison commander equivalent to enlistments and commissions and retirements is groundbreakings, demolitions, nice. and ribbon cuttings. I've managed to be able to do one of each yeah. in there. Uh, so uh, ribbon cuttings are a fun ceremony. Of course, most of the work is done. Groundbreaking is, uh, is very inspiring because it means there's progress. We're moving forward. We just did the groundbreaking ceremony a month ago for the new barracks, right? An yep. $80 million project uh, it, that will end up housing about 400 service members. And so uh, that that's fantastic. Cutting edge facilities for cutting edge warriors. We worked in conjunction with the NSA on We on did. The barracks. Uh, it was a Army 50%, NSA funded 50% uh, of the facility, we, which is great. It's just another thing. When we work together, we can do far more. It seems like we did a lot more stuff this year. I mean, whether it's a community or red, white, and blue, it just seemed like we had more events. And that was fairly intentional on your part, I think. It was. The one thing I knew for sure is that we had to lock down as a base for COVID because the Army locked down for COVID. And that I got to be the one, the first <clears throat> one to bring us back out of COVID. And so getting back to the community connections that we had before was absolutely a goal. And the staff came through in spades being able to make that happen. Our retiree appreciation day this year, uh, we, had, we had about 40 to 50 last year in 2022. This year we had 404 that signed in. That's yeah. not how many people came through total. Almost 300 people went to the Warrior restaurant to the DFAC for lunch of the, just of the retiree right. population. And we had the uh, red, white, and blue events in the summer. That probably was our first event where we were really able to bring the community back on yep. to post. And uh, the numbers are hard when we don't have someone counting, but it looked like about 2,500 uh, upwards potentially of 3,000 as we looked at our number gate count and as well as looking at the So is your mind already turning for next year, like how you oh, can make these events absolutely. better? Absolutely. Uh, you know me so well. Uh, so the, one of the things we did differently this year was Halloween. We yep. joined with the NSA's CWF, the Civilian Welfare Fund, which is kind of their version of an MWR uh, that we have. And so we are already talking. It was such a great event for Halloween. What can we do next to bring those two powerhouse organizations together that will also draw most of this base's workforces? 
So uh, something special is going to happen next summer, and they are the best fireworks. They I, are. Oh, yeah. I went to D.C. two days later, and I was not as impressed as I was sitting here on the parade field. I, I would like it if it was bigger, but like five minutes shorter. I know. But nobody has agreed with you yet. Everybody I, I talk to that loves make the me wrong. Of the <laughs> just, it just makes my, my opinion what's, different. What's right is not always popular. Right. What's popular is not always right. By the time this airs, we're going to be in 2024. So I would like to get, uh, you talked a little bit about the moments that you hit. We got a couple of those coming up. But, you know, as your last year in command, what are some of the things that you are looking to plan out for, for the year and some of the things that our audience can expect? to see around the installation. So 2024 will be a sad year for me because my Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Welch, uh, is going to retire in April. So it's a sad day for the Army. Uh, So we'll do the change of responsibility in his retirement, and I look forward uh, to getting someone else into the installation management family because it is a leap, uh, to be sure, of understanding. And then... uh, of course, farther down 2024, my own change of command, but that's far enough away. I'm not worried about yeah. that yet. But the other events, really, I'm, I'm looking towards the spring and summer. I'm looking towards the school events, getting Mead Cluster. Uh, we'll have the, we just did the wellness event uh, about two weeks ago now, but then uh, having the spring festival again uh, at the Mead High, Mead Middle location will be fantastic. I'm looking forward to Mead High being finished. The renovations are supposed to be ready. Oh, Reese yeah, Gate ACP, yep. will be open in 2024. Is it still your intention? Is Are you going to open it? I'm waiting for the traffic analysts that, to tell yeah. me which way really works better. Where does the flow work on this post? Yeah. Uh, we've talked through some of the traffic light issues and road construction and other yeah. efforts we have. And so that ultimately will be based on wherever we can have the best flow in and off of post, and then internal once they're on. Uh, but the visitor control center is still right there and accessible. And I, I really appreciate both Public Works and the contractor who made that possible for us to move into that VCC uh, this much earlier than the rest of the Reese Gate being open. Will that reopen the area by the PX? It will. That, That's that when we talk about reopened? that, all of that up to there. So. Other construction will be in the works, but nothing else is supposed to entirely block roads like we had to do for the gate. Uh, 2024 will also bring our next community expo. That was a new event for 2023. We didn't have as many people come through it as I would have liked. I think we got about 100 to 150. But everybody, even the, the vendor, everybody that went through talked about how much they appreciated what they learned. But more importantly, all the vendors that were there said they can't wait for next year. So even though I would have liked to have seen more numbers, it was the first event, and the vendors are already looking forward to coming back, so it was worthwhile to them. So I know that we can continue to make that a good event for the community. And then the other thing I'm looking forward to is the uh, Massing of the Colors. It's an event hey, that we haven't done. We're bringing back Massing of the Colors. There you go. And so Same, we, uh, same time, like around Memorial Day? Yes. Uh, May 19th is the day that we locked in. And that is basically where color guards come to you. It's a patriot. It's, a, it's it an awesome day. I'd never heard but of it. But are you going to have it in the pavilion or do we have a new location? We're doing it? it in the pavilion. The, fe- the fest tent slash pavilion back. is uh, back up. So we got the money to fix that from the snow that took it down a couple years ago. Yeah. And uh, so we'll, we'll be back in there. We'll have uh, part of the Army Field Band there with us. And then we're working on getting some of the old guard. Uh, to have, but I, I wasn't tracking massing of colors until I came here, in this position, and uh, now I understand that it literally is, every oh, yeah. possible color guard carrying the American flag, oh my gosh, and whatever their organization, and all coming together at once. And I saw one down in D.C. at Arlington Cemetery, yep. and it's just, it is absolutely inspiring. It's one of those events that a lot of people ask when we're we're bringing it back. So I'm sure that yeah. they'll be. I'm glad we can do it. Now we got to get everybody in to yeah make it worth. So as the year comes up, and obviously, you know, you did mention a little bit that this will be your your last year in command here. Um, You know, when does that, when do you you start plotting out, like, transition? 
So the change of command is tentatively set for August 9th, based on all the general officers and senior executive okay. calendars. Uh, my plan to transition has already begun because in some ways, I want to make sure that my replacement understands Fort Meade. And you can't, you can't understand Fort Meade unless you're in the garrison or even in this position to just know the complexity. But the more that she can understand before she comes in, uh, the more prepared she'll, she will be to hit the ground running. And so in some ways, from a professional standpoint, uh, we've started. From a personal standpoint, I'll be in denial until I hand over the colors. So okay. August 9th, I think, is when yeah. I will plan to move. And considering <clears throat> that uh, we think we're going to Texas, uh, but if we are, the school starts August 15th, there's not a lot of time for us to get that happening. So. I'll probably have to plan a little bit earlier. Probably will have to plan a little bit earlier. And then you mentioned, I guess, we'll, we'll get out on this. So you changed our vision for the installation, the strategic you know, vision for the DOD recognition yeah. of our place. So the Ford as a whole, do you see is growth going to continue? And you know, will we still remain or will we fortify our position as, you know, the the – DOD's platform for intelligence, information, and cyber operations. Are we are we on track to be doing to maintain that position? You know we are. I this know, uh, I know, I, but know. I can't I, say it. <laughs> no. So when I came in, our we called ourselves the nation's premier platform for cyber intelligence and information operations. Or like in that. a different order, the nation's premier platform for intelligence. <clears throat> Uh, information and cyber operations, yeah. I think, is the cyber the operations order. had to go third because you always remember the you hear rhetorically you yes. remember the third thing in the list. And so we knew that uh, we knew uh, anyone who's here knows that the senior levels of those three entities are happening here. Either they're happening every day, or they're training for it, or um, but we are. We knew that we are. What we realized in the vision statement is that we need other people to know because so much of this base is a small slice of Army, right? 10% of the workforce is Army. About 10% of the workforce is civilian. About, uh, correction, 10% is Navy. and 10% right. is Air Force. From the service standpoint, Fort Meade is a speck because it's just not enough of a footprint to, to really understand. Uh, people know the NSA, and now they know Cyber Command but they don't realize how much happens here. So that was part of the vision statement is for DOD to essentially recognize the impact that Fort Meade is because the challenges come that uh, support is always done, man, train, and equip happens by service, yep. not across DOD. DOD is operations. Um, so we don't want to get lost in that DOD umbrella. So that DOD recognition is critical. But the other is power is changing. 1917, when Fort Meade stood up, it was cutting edge of technology for power because it was all the troops that we were sending off to World War I. Very shortly after, it was tank warfare, and that was the cutting edge of warfare back in 1920s. Today, that is in the land of cyber. And so ones and zeros, although they're not officially recognized as power, absolutely have an impact. And... Uh, we can't win a war necessarily with ones and zeros, but we can lose one. And so that's what we're trying to do is ha not only have DOD recognition, but recognizing that uh, maybe it's time to have a discussion of what power and power projection is. And why is that important for the families and the things that you have to do or that the fort has to do in the services that it provides? The importance of understanding and recognition as power projection is that that's what brings a service level appreciation for the level of priority and support that should happen. So whether whether you're talking about paving roads, right. uh, getting new unclassified network lines laid and uh, the network enterprise center, the facility that it needs to maintain our networks, or it's even the security, the guard force, the numbers, the grade equivalents of who's operating facilities. Uh, all of that plays into the recognition of just the criticality of this space. Well, sir, it has been a privilege. It's always nice to get to be able to talk into here and to, to see a lot of the work and the decisions you do. Um, we'd like to get you on here a couple more times before um, 
you get out of here for sure. But uh, look forward to it's always a pleasure to serve uh, with you. And I'll uh, I'll let you close out for and tell everybody a happy new year and all that stuff. Certainly. 2023 has been amazing. I look forward to serving with all of you for 2024. And what I would say is however you choose to celebrate or not celebrate this time, uh, just do it with the people that you love and do it with the friends and family around you, uh, both immediately and far off. So thank you all, Team Maine. Life is just a marathon, so basic.